There's something so simple, pure, and peaceful about waking up to birdsong. Watching the sun start to illuminate the land. I love walking through the garden and seeing what's popped up overnight. Which flowers have opened and are buzzing with bees. Making sure the snails haven't chowed down on too many things. This is life here. Our morning routine feels healing, unrushed. We've been getting some really wonderfully clear blue skies the past couple days. It feels mesmerizing just to look out and be able to see the mountains against this blue backdrop. After so many gray overcast days, it's really refreshing. It also signals to us that it's time to begin planting some winter crops. We've enjoyed so many fresh, crunchy salads, tzatziki, and pickles over the past two months from these cucumber plants. But the time has come to say goodbye and collect the seed for next year. It's sometimes hard to know when the exact right time to plant something is. I don't know if that actually exists. People often tell us how the climate has become increasingly unpredictable here, and I imagine that's probably true the world over. Our tomato starts have been begging to be transplanted, so we got those in the ground. Maybe it was just me that was itching to get in the ground, though. You may or may not be able to tell, but our soil is still not the greatest or the softest, so you have to exert a fair amount of effort when digging into the ground. I seem to have particularly bad luck with slicing through worms whenever I'm using a hoe or a garden trowel, but today I had a little bit of a bigger casualty when trying to break up some of the compacted soil in this bed. I'm trying to break things up and I got a frog! Is that a toad? I think it's a toad, yeah. Oh my lord. Jeez! I just punctured him. Man! Dude, I'm so sorry. Oh! Since we're not putting large amounts of external inputs into the land here, we've decided that this garden is a bit of a school of hard knocks. 
Only the strong will survive. Bren took that a little bit too far though when he accidentally started digging up the squash plants to make way for the tomatoes. We've been making some really simple flower beds since flowers just make everything more beautiful and colorful and I feel like we have a distinct lack of flowers right now. We have this massive pile of sticks and branches from pruning the trees and bamboo and I figured it would make a good border for the additional beds. But I'm also hoping that the flowers are going to attract more pollinators. My squash has been having trouble producing much fruit, and my understanding is that it's due to failure to pollinate. So while right now my solution is hand pollinating the female flowers, these future flowers will help all of our vegetables thrive by attracting more bees and butterflies. Something kind of funny has happened with the squash that I planted. I originally planted Japanese kaboka squash, in this bed, um, only one survived. And I had these butternut squash seeds and so I just figured I would plant them and see if any of them survived. <laughs> and those actually did so much better. And now they've crossbred and so, so my one kaboka plant is producing fruit that's the color of butternut squash, but the shape of kaboka and my butternut squash plants are producing kaboka colored butternut squash shaped squash <laughs> so basically i just have two little like hybrid monster squashes and i'm really curious to actually see what they taste like they look really pretty but i've had a lot of trouble like pollinating these plants so i might only get a couple but it'll be interesting to see what they're like Every week, we cook dinner at Pun Pun. I think back to when we first came to Pun Pun and how stressful cooking for a large group felt. It can still feel a little stressful as we sometimes have to stretch our ability to repurpose leftovers and creatively use what's in the garden and kitchen to create a large enough meal to satisfy everyone. This week we made a white curry. We just called it that because everything in it was white. Curried noodles, fried mushrooms, fresh corn, and cucumbers. It's always satisfying when people are happy and full and we have the chance to connect with our friends and community members and the ever-changing roster of volunteers that come to experience this way of life. Life here feels like a nervous system reset in many ways. It doesn't mean everything is perfect, but there are so many good things to appreciate about being here. So much beauty and growth and life. I feel really grateful to have this time and place to experience slow living. Spending time together, learning, resting, and bringing our dreams into focus.
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to Bren's free weekly newsletter. It's where we share more thoughts and stories about our journey into sustainable and alternative ways of living.